It is, uh, has been a hobby of mine for a long time, uh, putting these skeletons together. Uh, and um, really, this is just going to show you some biology, I guess, and a little bit of history of certain things. Uh, so maybe we should start with uh, the very obvious, which is this lioness. Uh, she, uh, she must have died, I guess, about 10 years or more ago. And um, I went through the process of cleaning it. It's the process. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Do you use termites or like, you know, uh, flesh-eating beetles? I, I, yeah, I use beetles. Mm -hmm. There's a tenebroid uh, beetle and they call the committee. In nice. the movie Gorky Park, the, uh, the forensic department used to uh -huh. <laughs> give the cadaver to the committee. And wow. after a couple of months time, the committee has cleaned it and done its job. So in this case, oh. she, she was an old, very old female. You can see that her oh, yeah, teeth are worn down. Teeth were totally worn down. This rough here is from an abscess. So she must have lived with an abscess for many years. Um, and ultimately, lions are <coughs> their own worst enemy in the sense that most lions are killed by other lions. Um, and she has many scars on this body. So this is probably from a giraffe, these ribs that were broken at some point in her life, probably a big giraffe kick, given the amount of damage that was done. Normally lions try and kill each other by trying to get a canine into the vertebrae, or between the vertebrae. And you can see in this case, there's no less than four times that happened. Now it's a crushed vertebrae there, crushed vertebrae there, crushed mm. vertebrae there. In all three of those cases, it regrew. This you can see is shattered and didn't regrow. Uh, and that was probably at the, at the end of her life. Um, well, it must have been because it didn't regrow. And you can see there's a mark of By a By other canine. lions? Or yeah, other lions. You know, they, other females or males? They, they, they um, a little bit like when dogs, you know, especially yeah. little Jack Russells, where they can't get the thing they're chasing, they attack each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. what they <laughs> do. Um, and they, so she has, uh, you know, you can see on the tail, was also crushed there at some point. Hmm. So she was an old lady. Um, I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> and then she had a, yeah, that's the junior out here, quite a hard life. Um, so then, <clears throat> what can I sort of just move around? Oh, okay, let me um, Talk about So this... Yeah, you're good right there. Okay. Um, so th this is a leopard. Um, you can also see a very old boy, teeth missing, a, with a big male uh, called One Eye. Um, and um, and then our paths crossed in a very violent way. He killed two of my dogs. Um, he was at the end of his life, as you can see at the teeth. He, um, he had a, you can also see from the roughness there, he must have lived a terrible pain. It was an abscess. Um, and he just couldn't catch stuff anymore. And so eventually he hung out at the house and um, one tragic day he came into the house. Um, wow. and uh, that was that. <laughs> yeah, I killed both dogs. Um, and I had a baby. Um, and I, you know, given the, yeah. given the trajectory it was on, uh, I had to shoot him. Yeah. Um, uh, <coughs> this is just a little baker, you'll see. Oh, quite yeah. a few of them around, um, you know, just basic, you know, the antelopes don't have teeth on the top, it's got a palate, uh, I mean front teeth at the top, and all of these teeth are really just made to grind. Um, I'll show you, this, while, while we're talking about teeth, let me just quickly show you this, just so you have a bit of a good idea of it's also a male lion, but a young male lion. You can see how pristine his teeth were. Wow. Uh, wow. He was killed by another uh, lion, um, and uh, we suspected he had TB. That's why I cut his brain open. Mm. Tonight he didn't. Um, but uh, you can see the lions, you know, have slicing teeth, um, uh, as opposed to crushing teeth, and those connational slice past each other like scissors to cut uh, meat mm -hmm. off bone um, and obviously the great big canines to catch stuff with. So hmm. if we now compare this, let me just put 
quite a fair thing, yeah. Uh, to uh, where's my hyena? <coughs> so a hyena is. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, for that um, slicing teeth, and you know, one would <coughs> kind of guess they would have crushing teeth, mm. but they actually slice the bones they eat rather than ah. crush the bones. Mm. Only animal out here that can actually extract nutrients from bones, um, and um, this one also had a terrible end with a fight with lions. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Uh, and then this is an example of what a pristine young male leopard looks like. Is that? Yeah. Did you cut him up into? Yeah, he was also. You know, there was a time of a couple of years ago when we were very paranoid about TB spreading amongst the predators. Mm. And so every time we found a dead one, we did cut their. Oh, that's a very small brain cavity. Really. Small, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, very small. Yeah. <laughs> um, How many cases of TB did you end up finding? You know what? It, ultimately, the TB is there. Uh, it just turns out that the trajectory uh, of the disease is such that it, 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 it would only kill them after they died anyway. So that's what's happened with the buffalo, with the le leopards. Not uh, you know, leopards don't seem to really get it. We've had a few cases, but uh, but also the lions. So if he was living in a cage till the age of fifteen, he'd die of TB. Given they died before that from all manner of other causes. <laughs> it's you know, touch wood, but it's in the last two decades that's how it's panned out. So it is resonant there. Every now and then you do see a male lion with a big knob on his elbow. Mm -hmm. Not always, but very often, yeah, that is a mm -hmm. sign that he might have TV. How long have you been here? Uh, it was <coughs> permanently since 93 when we started the lodges, but I was here uh, um, from the 70s, so my father acquired this property in 78. And you're South African? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good yes, it is. A lot of changes in those years. It has been. Okay, this is a caracal, so just a uh -huh. smaller version of the uh, leopard. Um, I don't know that we, I've ever seen one. Do you mm. have as many here? Yeah, but you know, they, um, <coughs> the, the predators like these things need to keep quiet because predators like that thing eat them. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. And so I do spray at my house there where there's very few, well, there's a lot of those leopards, but um, hardly any of these. <coughs> Uh, they're much more, you, you notice them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like a jackal. Um, mm. uh, out here, you don't yield them, they keep shut, it's their mouth shut. But uh, out in this boat, they yield them. So, uh, <laughs> they adjust. Talking of jackals, uh, he has a skull of a jackal. Um, very similar to a dog skull. And dogs and jackals. Uh, are interesting, you know, I showed you the, <coughs> the leopard and the lion and the hyena all essentially having carnassials that slice. Uh, dogs have a slicing part to the carnassial, that front bit, but then it's got what's called a talonid heel, which is a crushing part, uh, which they use to crush bones with. So you'll see the teeth of slicing bit there, crushing bit there. Is that true with domestic dogs yes, as well? No. Uh -huh. And they'd be pretty tiny predator, a uh, prey that they'd be crushing the bones. Pretty much yeah. so, yes. Yeah, so. Probably those, those the birds we see. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's a vervet monkey. Um, it's, um, it, it looks very much like us. Uh, they, um, I'm not going to tell you very much about vervet monkeys, but the, the, that one came to me. Oddly enough, the day we got electricity here, because we had, we've only had electricity here for about 20 odd years, almost 25 years, um, that particular monkey grabbed it and oh. died. And I've never had that happen again. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, they all learned. Yeah. I guess, I guess. Well, no. They, they watched them. them. Yeah, they watched them, and, but then they must have passed on the knowledge. Um, so, baboons, um, you know, have this, um, 
progress you know, the muzzle uh, it, it, they start off looking quite a lot like that even like us and then as they grow the muzzle grows out um, and, um, and 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 you know makes for quite a formidable fortunately this one doesn't have his teeth but they have very large teeth yeah. Yeah, are these all from like animals that you've seen that were like dead or, or bones that you've picked up <laughs> well, these are the leopard <laughs> Except of the old well, yeah, the leopard, yes. So that one I made. Yes. <laughs> but wait, so she was, she, I'd known her for quite a while. Uh, she was uh, dying and she you know, had been attacked again. And so, in the interest of science, I asked uh, a range of the sang out. And, you know, so instead of hyenas ripping her apart, yeah, right, yeah. she died within a day or two. I collected her. Yeah. And, okay. uh, and well, just like the ones like with, that you've cut open. That's yeah. So that, in those cases, so he was a, a lion that was killed, and so that case, cut the head off. In, in that case, I didn't actually clean that lion uh, head. That was cleaned by the state vet mm -hmm. in, okay. in order to um, check the brain. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that okay. one was also all the others I did, but these two cut open ones, the state vet. Oh, okay, okay, I got it. Thank you. And then here is talking about cut open. Look at that. that who's who's ever seen a tortoise? Yeah. Yeah. The inside of a tortoise, you know, because essentially a tortoise and a turtle live inside their rib cages. So if you think, so the spine okay. is running along the top oh. there. It's not a shell that they've got that moved inside the rib cage. It's obviously a very successful design. It's been right. around for hundreds of millions of years in the sea and on land. Um, uh -huh. And if you look closely, you'll see essentially what these are. These are ribs that expanded and fused into each other mm -hmm. over the back. I see, so they cannot come out of their shell, they are their shell. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. they're living inside, wow. you know, so it's essentially yeah. think of your rib yeah, cage yeah. all fusing into one box and you're putting your legs in and how, your head. How similar is that to the land snail, so connection to its shell? A land snail, you'd say, it's very different. So a land snail has actually got a shell that is living inside. Once again, it cannot be separated from its shell, um, um, and the shell is deposited as it grows uh, on the lip and as it grows bigger. But in that case, it truly is outer and inner, whereas this is inside out in a way. The rib cage is the outside. Wow. And he has, a a like a he has a tail. He has a tail. Yeah, a little tail. Yeah. Oh. Which which is the leopard tortoise? This one. This is a baby leopard tortoise. Oh. They're normally quite a bit bigger. Yeah. Now, are they born fused like that, or like yeah. you know, like our kids, like they, they have that soft spot? Um, yeah. They, um, and uh, they they are a little bit soft, um, but they're tiny. They come out of eggs in this case of about this size, mm -hmm. um, and they are. Yeah, quite cartilaginous, so okay. yeah, very much like us, okay. uh, our heads anyway, um, and then they harden <coughs> over time. Okay.